A blizzard of legal news today. Everywhere you looked, there was an update, and mostly all of it bad for Donald Trump. First, we learned in a filing that Donald Trump made before the appellate division in the New York Attorney General civil fraud case, Trump says it is, quote, impossible for him to post the bond of at least $464 million. He's not even able to secure a surety bond. He claims he's went to over 30 plus companies, but no one would advance the funds for him. But I thought Alina Habba said that Donald Trump has so much money and it would be so easy for him to post the bond. Like everything, Donald Trump is lying once again, and it appears that he does not have the cash. Cash poor. What a liar, Donald Trump. Let's also talk about some devastating news that Donald Trump got earlier in the afternoon when Judge Juan Mershon and the Manhattan District Attorney criminal cases moving this along. I know last week it was a bit disappointing news to hear about uh, this 31,000 documents that were turned over by the Department of Justice. And yes, Judge Mershon granted a very short 30-day adjournment, but his ruling today, these disastrous pretrial rulings for Donald Trump allowing evidence to be introduced that Donald Trump did not want in, shows that Judge Juan Mershon is preparing this for a trial soon. So buckle up there, folks. Also, Supreme Court heard a oral argument in the case Murthy versus Missouri, where the MAGA Fifth Circuit issued an injunction against the Biden administration, where the Biden administration simply informed social media outlets, perhaps you shouldn't be spreading disinformation about vaccines and spreading Russian propaganda. The Fifth Circuit MAGA court They ruled that Biden should be precluded from doing that or the Biden administration. And the Supreme Court seemed to look at that MAGA court with disgust. Even some of the right wing justices like Justice Kavanaugh seemed to and he worked in a presidential administration. He's just kind of like, what? Of course, the government can be able to say, hey. You know, maybe you want to take that down. That's not coercion. We should also talk about the fact that Peter Navarro, one of the senior officials in the Trump administration, is going to jail tomorrow. The Supreme Court denied his emergency petition to not be locked up. Bye-bye, Peter Navarro. Donald Trump attacked Cassidy Hutchinson in a post that seems, in my view, to violate the gag order in Washington, D.C. federal criminal D.C. federal criminal case. We'll see what special counsel Jack Smith does there. Donald Trump appealed the ruling by Judge McAfee in Fulton County, allowing Fulton County District Attorney Fawny Willis to remain on the case. That uh, order by Judge McAfee issued on Friday. Trump is seeking Judge McAfee to certify the appeal so that Donald Trump and Trump's co-defendants can try to challenge the ruling by Judge McAfee. And then, of course, we got to talk about what went down in Dayton, Ohio. I mean, look, I think through the scrappy stick-to-itiveness of Midas Touch reporters, hat tip to Ron Filipkowski, hat tip to Asin, hat tip to all of our team posting these clips over and over again. Donald Trump talking about a bloodbath and using it in a speech where he also uh, saluted the J6 insurrectionists, which you know he always does in his speeches, um, and praised the insurrectionists as hostages. That went mega viral. And for the first time, it seems that some of the other media outside of Midas Touch is like, wait a minute. So You're telling me that he does the J6 anthem? Yes, that's what we've been telling you. We've been showing you these clips all along. He replaced the national anthem with the J6 or so. In other words, we've got a lot to discuss on on today's podcast. But good news, that's the seesaw that we talk about. You know, there'll be discouraging news. There'll be uplifting news. It's why you just got to stay there in the pocket, stay calm. And let's just focus on, you know, working hard to defend our democracy and get the data out. Brett, Jordy, how are you doing? Doing great. As Jordy says, you got to lock in. You got to lock in. Lock sometimes. in, baby. Lock always, in. <laughs> always lock 
in. And yeah, it's that it's that psychological whiplash that we've been speaking about on the show. And that's why anytime there's like news that seems bad or is bad, you know, I I get it's you know it, it sucks and it's oftentimes like your first reaction is to get truly up like very upset by it. But that's why I encourage everybody take a breath. Let it play out. Let's see what happens. No need to jump to any conclusions. And today we have a lot of good news. Well, bad news for Donald Trump, but that means good news for the good guys. I'm excited to get into it all. And Ben, I'm excited to hear about this, these Supreme Court arguments also. I find this an incredibly interesting turn of events and just such a bizarre argument that I feel like you'd never even hear a, a few years ago, but it just shows how far right uh, the courts and these MAGA Republicans have truly moved where they're just in like a completely different universe right now when it comes to everything, be it the law or even just basic facts and, and truth. It's all just one disinformation echo chamber. Mm -hmm. You had, look, you had uh, Justice Kagan, an Obama appointee, and Justice Kavanaugh, a Trump appointee. They had both worked in presidential administrations, respectively, different ones, of course. And they both were like, you realize that like, that's just how we interact with the press. Like you're saying we can't occasionally be mean. That's not coercion. Like we can't be mean or tell the press to take down things if we think it's false. They don't have to listen to us, but we have the ability to say, hey, we don't think that's right. Like, what are you talking about? Sorry, Jordy. You... <laughs> no, hey, I just, I want to get ahead of a few things on this episode. One. Yes, I do have spit up on my left shoulder. My my baby boy was uh he, he did a little spit up right before the podcast. Wow. I know that's why people tune in, wow. but I know blame, blame I already, the baby. I already see the comments that like Jay, you're wearing a dirty shirt. It's not my, it happened literally right before I came on air. And then second off, guys, I'm getting old. I sneezed this morning, totally threw out my back. Like was like <laughs> on the ground in like I'm, I, yeah, it brutal. Like I yeah. I like to think yeah. I'm young, and then all of a sudden I sneeze and throw out my back, and I just realize just well, how old I am. It happens, so, what are you, you going to do? It happens, you know. Rough one for me today, but but I'm excited <laughs> for the show. For those who know Jordy and his backstory, we'll talk about it more on the after show at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. <laughs> Jordy has a history of sneezing issues, actually dating back to second grade where our mom had to intervene because Jordy was apparently a distraction to the class based True. on sneezing. And but we'll learn more about some of those stories for the after show because we've got a lot of legal news to cover. Brett, I'd love for you to play this clip a few weeks back when Alina Habba was asked if Donald Trump had the funds yeah. in order to post the bond in the New York Attorney General civil fraud case. Well, she wouldn't lie to us, Ben. Alina no, Habba. it's Alina no, Habba. We Habba. all know that Alina Habba and Donald Trump, when they straight say shooters, straight. The, North, the North Star of honesty, they, they tell it how it is. Yeah. <laughs> Play the clip. So Judge Engeron says that he wants this $350 million within 30 days. Now, I know that you're planning on appealing this, but you've still got right. to put up the full amount pending that appeal. Does Donald Trump so. have that kind yeah. of money sitting around? Yes. I mean, he does. Of course, he has money. You know, he's a billionaire. Um, we know that. Um, and yeah, I, no, I got to play poker. I have to play poker with these people. I have to play poker with these people. Like, it, it's I'm not one even of a the good things also player, is <laughs> that like. You know, Alina Habba is like Judge Eileen Cannon, right? So if you picked like Alina Habba is the type of person who would become a federal judge if Donald Trump were to disgrace that office again, and then she would be making decisions over your life. She could issue nationwide injunctions and she could engage in the types of conduct that like speaking about the Murthy v. Missouri case that like the Supreme Court had to then deal with today. And even the Supreme Court's like, like, like what? Like you're saying because some people in the Biden administration were a bit mean to members of the media when the media posted vaccine disinfo, that that's somehow threats and coercion. It also goes to how these MAGAs are just such a bunch of snowflakes. And I was like, you're canceling me. And they actually are the ones who try to cancel everybody. But it's like, no, I'm just saying, stop being a racist idiot. Like stop being a jerk. Like just stop acting like that. That's all I'm saying. Like you're behaving like a, a ridiculous person. You're behaving like in a way that you shouldn't as a, as a, a nice way to put it. <laughs> so, so here's the brief that Donald Trump filed um, today. And this is Trump's brief. This isn't, you know, the Midas touch brief. This is what Trump says. Posting a full undertaking is a practical impossibility. 
And then it goes on to talk about how, well, this amount of judgment with interest, it exceeds 464 million and very few bonding companies will consider a bond of anything approaching that magnitude. Pause. I thought you just have the cash. Well, why do you even need to go to a bonding company? I thought you have the money. I thought, oh, and didn't you say, Donald Trump, that Mar-a-Lago was worth $1.8 billion, which means... If Mar-a-Lago was truly worth $1.8 billion, wouldn't that mean that your equity in Mar-a-Lago would be somewhere between $1 to $1.8 billion, given that you basically purchased it for almost nothing at all? Wouldn't your equity be closer to $1.8 billion? Why wouldn't banks be lining up for this refi if you actually believe if they actually believe that Mar-a-Lago was worth $1.8 billion? I guess because like everything. You are a liar. It goes on to say, the remaining handful, referring to now surety companies, will not, quote, accept hard assets such as real estate as collateral, but, quote, will only accept cash or cash equivalents such as marketable securities. Moreover, sureties would typically require collateral of approximately 120% of the amount of judgment, which would require defendants to hand over collateral in the form or cash or cash equivalents of approximately $557 million. In addition, sureties would likely charge bond premiums of approximately 2% per year with two years in advance and upfront cost of over $18 million. And then as you actually go through a declaration that was filed by Donald Trump's general counsel, someone by the name of Alan Garten, it talks about the apparently 30 plus sureties that they go to and they go, while defendants have been negotiating bond collateralized by both liquid assets and real property with Chubb, one of the largest insurance companies in the world within the past week, Chubb notified defendants that it could not accept real property as collateral. Though disappointing, this decision was not surprising, given that Chubb was the only surety willing to even consider accepting real estate as collateral. For defendants, this presents a major obstacle. Pause. What's the obstacle here? I thought you're so rich. Also, something that people aren't talking about that I want to do a whole hot take on for tomorrow morning. So make sure you check back in on the Midas Touch Network. Facts since Justice Ngoron's order, right? Think about it. Since Justice Ngoron made his ruling, we now learned that Trump's chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg, turned the courtroom into a literal crime scene by committing perjury in the courtroom. That perjury, that criminal conviction is not in Justice Ngoron's order. So wouldn't Donald Trump have extra unclean hands to even make this request to the appellate division? Why Donald Trump is filing this is because he's requesting based on him saying he's essentially saying he's destitute. He's saying he's cash poor. He's basically saying he's indigent at this point and that he needs help because why should he have to sell things or it would be a fire sale? You were found liable for fraud and your CFO was just convicted of a crime of perjury in this case. Why do you get any benefit of the doubt on any of this? So I'm hoping that the New York Attorney General's office point that piece out as well, that that Weisselberg committed fraud. So Trump Trump and these declarations should mean absolutely nothing. One more point I want to add, and then I want to throw it, Brett, to you and and Jordy for your reaction. Remember how Trump and and his son, Eric, during the whole trial said, we're the biggest real estate corporation in America. We're the best run. We've got the best. We got the best balance sheets and we're the best company. Well, in this brief to the court, they argue to the contrary, and they basically say that, in short, a bond of this size rarely, if ever seen, in the unusual circumstances that one is issued, it is only provided to the largest companies in the world, not to individuals or privately held businesses. So now they're arguing that they're just a, we're just a mom and pop shop. Uh, (laughs) Isn't this so typical though, Ben, they argue... Yeah. It's what they do with everything, though, right? They argue one thing in the press, then a completely separate thing in the legal filings. And when they do cross that line of the lies in the legal filings, which happens, uh, then that's when they get into trouble. And I think it's worth pointing out as well that they asked 
30 underwriters to back a bond and all 30 of them declined to do so. Imagine that. Imagine, Mr. I'm a billionaire. Look, I have all these properties. Look, I have all this money. If you have all that money, if you have all that collateral, if you aren't over leveraged in all your properties, then surely there'd be one of these 30 companies that you reached out to would say, all right, I got you. You're a trustworthy guy, Mr. Trump. We, we got you. But it's obvious why they did not do that because the risk is far too high for somebody like Donald Trump who doesn't pay his bills to begin with and then clearly does not seem to have the collateral here. So now it seems like what, Ben? We have what a week before the New York Attorney General, before the state of New York can begin to collect from Donald Trump unless the appeals court does indeed decide to step in. That means the New York Attorney General can begin to seize his properties, liquidate his assets, do all of that. Do I have that right? You have that right, and it's like he wants to benefit from his fraud. Hey, appellate division, no one wants to do business with me because I'm a total fraud. So as a result, appellate division, I need you to help me out and stay the enforcement of the fraud judgment against me um, because my fraud makes nobody want to do business with me. And all those times I said that I'm so rich and have all of this cash, Oh, by the way, psych, including in Donald Trump's testimony under penalty of perjury. I mean, I think we need to look at that. When Donald Trump said when he testified that he has all of this cash and all of this assets, why would that be any different than Alan Weisselberg's testimony? I mean, wouldn't that be perjury right there? So this is the situation that Trump is dealing with. Now we'll see what the New York Attorney General's you know, response is. But here's the thing. If somebody had shame which Trump doesn't, you would never make this type of argument. But in his own mind, he thinks that his followers are so utterly dumb that as long as he said this is the deep state and, and Goron's a deep state operative and this is a political witch hunt, that no one will actually read the things and focus on what Trump's actually writing because deep state, you know, fake, Clinton operative, just throw a bunch of words together. And Gore has nothing to do with Clinton, but you know, you but, but you put it together. Uh, it and, doesn't and matter if what... anyone has anything to do with anything, Ben. It's all it's about it's about the it's about the buzzwords, right? You know, the thing. And, and sorry to interrupt your your train of thought there, but the thing that really uh, jumped out to me too when I saw this filing from Trump is he still continues to lie about the value of Mar-a-Lago. He still is lying about it in this filing. He said, actually, what the judge said, and we've went over this a billion times. It was not the judge <laughs> who said, I am valuing Mar-a-Lago at this. They are taking the Palm Beach State Assessor. They are taking Donald Trump's own valuation of the property. They're mm -hmm. taking into account the fact that this is not a residential property, that it is a club. Donald Trump did all of these things to lessen his own tax burden, and now he wants to have it both ways. That's why it is valued what it is. But even in this filing, you see, Donald Trump be like, they undervalued Mar-a-Lago by 50x, by 100x. And you have like 900, like the, according to Donald Trump in this filing, Mar-a-Lago Mar is apparently worth 900 million to like $3 billion or something ridiculous. Well, if I'm sorry, if that's the case, then I don't think you'd be having a lot of trouble finding the collateral or, or putting this up as collateral for your bond. But it's BS and everyone knows it's BS. Here, here's what you would do. You would just refi the you would refinance the property, and there would be banks lining up for it. And you would go to a bank and you would say, "Hey, you know, if you claim it's three billion dollars, a bank should be so willing to give you five hundred million dollars, you know, you know, in cash, and basically and and basically take out that note." But the banks know that Donald Trump is going to rip them off. Number one, and also. It is not a residential property. It is a social club. So a bank could not foreclose on the property and sell it. If a bank did foreclose on the property and had the property as collateral, they would only be able to get about $30 million because it is a club. Assume it is a residential property. The bank would probably be able to get $300 million. So if a bank lent $500 million, it would still be underwater by two to $300 million. That's why, if you just look at the common sense, why no bank ever wants to, you know, you know, do this. And so for all the people out there who were giving me that MAGA math and trying to explain to me the way it works, if you're truly in the real estate industry, if you truly know finance, then why can't he simply refi? 
why wouldn't anyone oh is that the deep state also oh got it got it got it that's that's what it is right there brett i want to talk also though about um what went down this afternoon again it was fast and furious with all this news today where judge juan mershon the manhattan judge who's overseeing the Manhattan District Attorney criminal case against uh, Donald Trump for the hush money payments and misclassifying the business records in, in 2016. Um, Judge Juan Mershon denied Donald Trump's uh, motion in limine, which is just a pretrial motion, to block the testimony by Michael Cohen, Stormy Daniels, and Karen McDougal. Um, Trump also wanted to preclude prosecutors and some great reporting here by Adam Klasfeld, hat tip for summarizing. He does great work. Um, Trump wanted to preclude prosecutors from arguing that the hush money scheme sought to influence the 2016 presidential election. The defense also wanted to block even the mention of catch and kill. The judge denied that. So the prosecution, the, the district attorney will be able to bring that in. There was some nuance on the ruling as to Stormy Daniels and McDougal and Dino Sejudin. Dino Sejudin was the doorman at one of the Trump buildings. The prosecutors cannot introduce lie detector evidence for Stormy Daniels, and there may be limitations to the testimony of the other two witnesses. But ultimately, that makes sense because you, you do want to invite, uh, avoid some of the other prejudicial stuff from coming in. And by the way, I say this as someone who's very critical of Donald Trump, but I think the thrust of their testimony, oh, that's probably not the best word to use here. The majority of their testimony will, will be able to come in. Trump wanted to also block the admission of nearly 100 statements attributed to him. That was denied. He wanted to block his own words. <laughs> it's saying, oh, I may have said that, but don't uh, don't include that um, in the trial. Okay. Well, it reminds me of liar, liar. Why? Because it's damaging to my case. <laughs> <laughs> And then a lot of the motion and liminees filed by the prosecution were granted. So Trump can't argue that his indictment is somehow novel, unusual, or unprecedented. Trump can't complain in front of the jury, or his lawyers can, about pre-indictment delay. Trump can't attack the purported motives of the district attorney judge or court staff to the jury. Trump can't try to gain sympathy from jurors about possible punishment. I mean, the fact that you even have to file this in Trump's opposing those things, that's what he wants to do, tells you a lot. I guess here's one big one in terms, but I predicted this. If you go back to Legal AF, or maybe it was the Brother podcast, this is the one I predicted would go down this way, um, that the Access Hollywood tape and the sexual assault allegations with, within the tape itself, um, that the tape can't be played, although it can be described about that, you know, that being in the background. And I, I think Judge Mershon just doesn't want to be reversed. And the reality is, is that um, the, what was said on the Access Hollywood tape itself, as it relates to making the hush money payments to Stormy Daniels, when you play the tape, I think the judge's concern is, would the prejudice of the jury hearing that outweigh its what's called its probative value and ultimately, if the jury is aware that Donald, without playing it, Trump made statements bragging about sexual assault, and as a result, his camp, his campaign, you know, was having serious issues, it's going to get in that way. And I get why the judge would want to be concerned about avoiding, um, and you know, any type of appeal right there. But what this tells me in general, Brett Jordy and the Midas Mighty, though, Judge Mershon is moving this case forward. I think Judge Mershon recognizes and realizes that this discovery issue with the Department of Justice is much to do about nothing. And ultimately, where I think it nets out is that these documents that were produced to are not even really material to this case. And so they're kind of fighting over, I don't know, some limited potential impeachment as it relates to Michael Cohen from grand jury testimony there, but it doesn't even go to the thrust. Again, why am I using that in this specific case? It doesn't go to the heart of this specific um, uh, case. One thing I do want to mention as we talk about um, the media finally picking up onto like Trump speech in Dayton, Ohio, and like Outside. that's why we have to keep kind of getting it out. <laughs> I, I don't know if you saw what's, you know, like, like CNN, I'm not sure if we've got what CNN tried to put Donald Trump CNN was saying that it actually may, this was CNN actually posted this, that it may appeal 
to like independent voters that Donald Trump uh, had sex with a porn star because it goes to like his strength as a man, they basically say, to which I basically responded, um, okay, CNN, so you're saying that Donald Trump's premature, ja premature ejaculation and Stormy Daniels saying he has a tiny penis um, while his third wife was uh, just delivered birth to their first son. So he's cheating on his wife the, and he got a tiny penis and premature ejaculation that, 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 that is some like independent, what do you talk? Independent voters are supposed to be into that. Like how it's a, how could you even write a headline like that? But CNN actually, actually posted that. And by the way, that's why we just all collectively have to be relentless in covering this stuff each and every day, which which we will. When we come back from our first ad break, I want to I want to pull open what CNN says, just because it's so wild that it's hard to believe. Then I want to talk about Trump's attempt to appeal in Fulton County. I want to talk about this Murphy case. I, we got to get into Dayton, Ohio, um, and then we got to talk about a lot of other things happening. I mean, just just think about it. Uh, former Vice President Pence saying he's not going to, to endorse Donald Trump at the end of last week. Like, there's so much news going around. We just got to keep up with, show. With, with, with all of it. And we'll, of course, do that here on the Midas Touch podcast. Let's take our first quick break. Isn't it disappointing to buy a bag of delicious smelling coffee beans only to get home and make a coffee completely devoid of character? AeroPress Coffee uses a patented brew method that gets the purest flavors from the beans and speed things up so coffee doesn't get over extracted. You get a smooth, rich, bitter-free cup of coffee that tastes as good as the smell of freshly roasted beans. AeroPress is like a French press that makes a way better cup of coffee. AeroPress uses a patented 3-in-1 brew technology that combines the flavor benefits of espresso, pour over, and French press into one compact, portable device built for travel. You get a completely unique and delicious cup of coffee wherever you go, only possible with an AeroPress. With over 55,000 five-star reviews in over 60 countries, AeroPress is the best-reviewed coffee press on the planet. At just under $50, with all those great reviews, AeroPress makes an exceptional gift. Thoughtful, proven, tasty, and travel-oriented. Who won't love that? Gift receipt, not needed. A community of global baristas established the AeroPress, coveting its versatility and unique tech that allows them to make thousands of recipes, unmatched by any other coffee maker. Seriously, I've used super expensive coffee machines that my friends have tried to brag about, and the coffee I brew with my AeroPress is a billion times better. It really cannot be beat. AeroPress is shockingly affordable. It's less than 50 bucks, and we've got an incredible offer for our audience. Visit AeroPress.com slash Midas. That's A-E-R-O-P-R-E-S-S dot -S com slash Midas and use the promo code Midas to save 20% off your order. That's AeroPress.com slash Midas and be sure to use that code Midas at checkout to save 20%. It's time to ditch the drive through toss the French press, and say yes to better mornings fueled by better coffee. AeroPress ships to the USA and over 60 countries around the world, and we thank AeroPress for sponsoring our show. Ever wonder how much of your personal data is out there on the internet for anyone to see? More than you think. Your name, contact info, social security number, and home address, even information about your family members all being compiled by data brokers and sold to the highest bidders online. Anyone on the web could get your private details. This could lead to identity theft, phishing attempts, harassment, and unwanted spam calls. But now you could protect your privacy with Delete Me. With all the work we do here at the Midas Touch Network, I take my privacy very seriously. That's why I personally use Delete Me. Delete Me finds and removes any personal information you don't want online and makes sure it stays off. Delete Me is a subscription service that removes your personal info from the largest people search databases on the web and in the process helps prevent potential ID theft, doxing, and phishing scams. Sign up and provide Delete Me with exactly what information you want deleted and their experts will take it from there. Delete Me sends you regular personalized privacy reports showing what info they found, where they found it, and what they removed. Delete Me isn't just a one-time service. Delete Me is always working for you, constantly monitoring and removing the personal information you don't want on the internet. Take control of your data and keep your private life private by signing up for Delete Me. Now at a special discount for our listeners. Today, get 20% off your Delete Me plan when you go to join 
joindeleteme.com slash Midas and use promo code Midas at checkout. The only way to get 20% off is to go to joindeleteme.com slash Midas and enter code Midas at checkout. J-O-I-N-D-E-L-E-T-E-M-E dot com slash Midas. Let's go. Big Brett, man. You know, it's always so impressive when I figure out like you guys are also super talented in the other things we do. Like those were some A plus plus ad reads right there, Big Bro. Shout the people, out to our sponsors. The people man. demanded more Brett reads. And honestly, because they're fantastic. Absolutely, folks. Absolutely. Now I I I love I love our sponsors. They we truly have the best sponsors. And you use that AeroPress and- all the time. Aeropress, oh, iced, iced Americano, straight from the Aeropress. Honestly, the greatest. And delete me yeah. is great. And look, delete me, is, it, delete me is super delete cool. Delete me for us. Oh my god, it's like been <laughs> such a life. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Such a life. <laughs> well, people's like numbers and edge, like things are just like out there. So Online. Like, yeah. Use, and delete, use, and delete use, me delete. like scrubs that delete me's like nah i'm gonna find that scrub it so You're definitely check me. both those out they're the best i've just been super self-conscious this episode well first off all the links are in the descriptions of the audio and the youtube just click them right there and use our code we work really hard to get you all those amazing deals so not only do i have the spit up i've been drinking coffee to help get me through my night feeds <laughs> with the little guy i have like coffee tongue i like said one thing in this episode i have like this yellow coffee tongue now and so i'm i'm, I'm in my head this episode fellas i'm in my head this episode don't be in your head. It's all good. We got your back. People like when you have stains on your shirt and have coffee. <laughs> that's their favorite. That's their favorite, Jordy. All right, let's get let's get into it. Um, just think, Jordy, you could uh, you could be doing this on CNN. I mean, I think this is far more embarrassing than your coffee tongue and your stain. CNN posted this. This is what I said before the ad break. I was going to show y'all. Does Donald Trump's former relationship with the porn star Stormy Daniels actually play to his advantage with some voters? Basically, there's a manly vigor on display that Biden doesn't have. <laughs> Are you kidding? Are, yeah, oh, my God. They, 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 they really wrote this. When I so saw this, I, I thought it was somebody making fun of CNN and making fun Feels of like like the like onion. news coverage. Yeah, I, I was like, that's not real. And then because it's it's a post from one of their shows also. So uh, what was, what's the show here? CNN This Morning with Casey Hunt. So then I was like, CNN This Morning with Casey, is that a real thing? And then I saw the verification. I saw the CNN logo. I'm like, no, this is disgusting. Legitimate you know what post. journalism isn't? When you pose things as questions like that, like what type of quote unquote reporting is that? No, you've just now become a talk show. We're just asking questions, George. We're just asking we just, questions. We just you know want to know, know if a porn star if Donald Trump's identifies with a porn star identify. will actually help him with suburban yeah. voters. Is that going to yeah, help? Right. This was, you know, I, almost like when Trump and all the MAGAs started coming out and saying how his indictments were going to help him with the black community. Straight up, it's offensive. Like if you are a CNN, you you should be offended by that segment that they would just so belittle your intelligence with that smut. We all know that what suburban voters are looking for in the president of the United States is somebody (laughs) while married to their third wife who is premature ejaculation with a tiny penis and a porn star and then covers and then makes a cover up hush money payment and then calls the porn star a horse face. Like if, if I think, how do I expand Paul's well, politicians Paul's well. appeal to independent minded voters, moderates, mainstream conservatives? How do you win back the Nikki Haley voters? I don't know. I think CNN, CNN is the most stupidest stuff. Like, but this is the state of, of, of journalism right now. Oh, and, um, you know, but it's, it's, it's on us. And by right. us, I mean you watching this, this community to keep getting out the message. And I think it is working as well. By, by the way, the fact that Donald Trump can post this as well, and like we're the only people who cover it. So Donald Trump over the weekend after Fulton County Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee said that uh, Fulton County District Attorney Phony Willis can remain on the case if Nathan Wade resigns. Um, the special prosecutor on that case, and, and Nathan Wade then resigned. This is what Donald Trump was posting. And I'm not going to play the video because it's frankly, it's very disgusting. But Donald Trump was posting AI videos of Fawny Willis in lingerie and bathing suits. I think we have other photos of it as well in, in, in bathing suits and lingerie. And again, this is somebody who the Republican Party wants to give the nuclear codes to. And you know, I saw it in one of the comments as as I kind of give a summary of what goes down at these Trump speeches, where I literally just say, here's what he said. And I just quote him directly. You know, someone said, you know, he, he's like the worst type 
of middle school boy who you really need to like discipline and be like, look, like you're behaving abysmally. Like it has, it's the, and no offense to like middle school, but, but like the most immature, trashy crap. But then of course you combine that with fascism and wanting Vladimir Putin to destroy our allies um, and the United States of America. But it's like, who, who even behaves like this? Like in many ways, part of what this election is becoming as it should is kind of in a, in a, in a competition of character and behavior and like like this person's behaving like just dangerous and weird and 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 gross and stop giving him the benefit of the doubt you're posting ai photos of fulton county district attorney fawny willis like beyond like that's what you're spending your time doing you know and by the way then trump's lawyers go to judge mcafee and by the way all of the trump maga people were like this system's rigged judge mcafee was in on it he works for fawny willis and that's why he held these here really like you think judge mcafee was doing fawny willis favors by making her testify and having these hearings into her sex life like that has nothing to do with the underlying criminal prosecution uh to find that there is no actual conflict of interest but then judge mcafee claiming that there may be uh, an, an odor of mendacity an odor of mendacity i did a whole hot take rant on how just absurd that is and how just uh, despicable i thought the order was but the bottom line is fawny willis is permitted to um, stay on the case. Um, and then if you look at what, what Trump's lawyers just filed today, they filed a joint motion for a certificate of immediate review, asking Judge McAfee to allow them to appeal it because this is all they want to do. Delay, 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 focus on Phony Willis's sex life and try to dodge accountability. That's just kind of the uh, MAGA way right there. And meanwhile, Donald Trump uh, today, in addition to those disgusting posts I showed you, also threatened um, Cassidy Hutchinson, um, which I just think is beyond uh, despicable. Do, do we have these posts of, of of what he said there? And again, you know, she worked for Mark Meadows. She was a senior advisor to Mark Meadows. Um, and she was there in all the rooms. She courageously testified before the January 6th committee. And here's what Trump posts. And again, she's a witness in, in the uh, case in Washington, D.C., where there's a gag order imposed on Donald Trump. Trump writes, our great secret service has totally crushed Cassidy Hutchinson, who I barely knew, made up fake stories about me, roughing up Secret Service agents from the back seat of the Beast limo. Has she now changed her testimony? Will she be prosecuted for what she did and said? What about the unselect J6 committee? They destroyed almost everything, including real evidence and findings. What's going to happen with them? Serious crimes have been committed. And then as we start to talk a little bit later in this episode about Donald Trump's bloodbath comment, he also posted that Liz Cheney and those who were on the January 6th committee should be imprisoned and basically intimated in, in kind of the Trumpian language that he would have his administration, um, if he were to ever disgrace our country again, basically lock up Liz Cheney and lock up those who were on the January 6th committee investigating his- He was just talking about the automotive industry, I think. When he was He's just talking about the automotive. Well, you, you, you see, what we really have to understand what Donald Trump is. The full context here- He's, a man, he's a man of nuance. He's a man of nuance. So when he starts his speeches by pledging allegiance to the J6 insurrectionists, who he calls hostages, and then he changes the words of the national anthem uh, to new words, what, what, we, what we actually need to reflect upon is that's the automotive industry. that he's, 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 he's doing the national automotive anthem. I mean, come on and give me a freaking break. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that's why I, I want to go through some of these clips too, uh, because, you know, one of the things that I've noticed also is now that like some of the media at least appears to be waking up to it, they're reporting like, I'm happy they're doing it, but their reporting also makes me laugh. And I mm. just want to be like, where have you been the past year? Like, I, I see all these like reports in, in newspapers and on cable news where they go. Donald Trump's speech last night took a dark turn. Donald Trump began his speech by pledging allegiance to January 6th. Did you know 
Did you know, fine <laughs> readers, that Donald Trump <laughs> seems to support the January 6th insurrection and is actually calling them paid? Did you know this? We have breaking news reporting, everybody. Did you know the darkness of the Donald Trump? It's like, yes, we've been playing the clips every freaking day for the past few years. He started his he started his campaign in Waco, Texas on the anniversary yeah. of the incident in Waco. His entire campaign <laughs> is about violence and retribution, about payback, about destroying the United States. He's not running on anything else. That is his message. He wants to tear down the United States and he frames his entire speech around that that uh motivation and you'll see as we play should we get into this now i don't want to ruin your flow ben i just you you're you're on a you're you're spinning some fire right there i just want to say brett (laughs) yeah you're exactly right but to your point too you know shout out midas brother shout out midas mighty we knew that as we got closer and closer and closer to the election we've said it on the show you know being hopeful indeed that the that the quote-unquote legacy media would start to pick up on these ludicrous antics, these anti-American ideals that Donald Trump continues to espouse weekend after weekend. And just thank goodness. Now I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not setting my ways that they're going to be doing this every time. Now he, he does something crazy like this. Um, but I am hopeful seeing as this weekend went by that they did report on it seemingly the correct way as you should in shock right. and awe and disgust. Repetition is important. You know, that's why that's why we play these so often. That's why it's important to hear it from his own words. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think folks are starting to understand. And that's why we're seeing all these videos also of all these Republicans or, or former Republicans or Nikki Haley, Haley voters who say that this truly is a test of empathy. Right. This is a test of like, right. do we want just a good a uh, well-intentioned person, or do we want a maniac who wants to destroy the country? And I think when faced with those that binary choice in this election, I think it's going to become increasingly obvious to people, as it is to all these Nikki Haley voters. Sort of a the, tale as old as time, just good versus evil. That's what well, it boils yeah, down to at the end of the day. Exactly. The moral character of our nation is on the ballot, right? Mm-hmm. Even like, this is why I think President Biden is framing these issues so appropriately, it is democracy versus this MAGA thing, which is kind of this wannabe fascism, um, you know, this vengeance, this this hate. And you you see right there these two frameworks. I mean, and look, there's been another reporting by CNBC, although we've been talking about this forever, Donald Trump's struggles with fundraising, both small dollars and, and big dollar donors. I think we'll see a full report um, coming out soon in March, which I think is going to show devastating numbers for Donald Trump with record-breaking numbers for President Biden. Um, before going through the state in Ohio speech, I, I'll mention two things. Along those lines, um, uh, it's been reported that Donald Trump will likely be bringing back Paul Manafort, who Donald Trump pardoned, who was literally convicted in two separate federal cases in connection with the Mueller uh, investigation, uh, that Trump would be bringing back Manafort to have a kind of role pain and a leading role in a potential administration to, you know, inflict harm. I mean, Manafort quite literally, or you know, we, the, the, the evidence has least suggested, I'll say, that he had worked with Russian oligarchs and yeah, significant connections with Vladimir, you know, with, with Putin and with pro-Russian forces. That's really what he was doing before kind of suddenly becoming a campaign manager for Donald Trump. And then he was you know, of course, convicted, and then Donald Trump uh, uh, pardoned him. And then uh, rounding out our court coverage, as we talked about at the top of the show, Peter Navarro going to jail tomorrow. If you're listening to this on the audio that gets released on Tuesday, he's probably in jail right now. Um, If you're watching this live right now on the video show, the Supreme Court denied his last minute attempt to try to block um, going to prison. I mean, he was just kind of squirming and <laughs> yeah, he seems very possible. afraid to go to prison. What He's I said to Jordy, Green Bay sweep your way to prison, Peter. Green Bay sweep. 
opioid and, and then as I talked about Cassidy Hutchinson, why I think it violates the DC gag order. If we just take a quick look, maybe we could just pull the gag order up just for a quick second. Yeah. The gag order is affirmed to the extent it prohibits all parties and their counsel from making or directing others to make public statements about known or reasonably foreseeable witnesses concerning their potential participation in the investigation or in this criminal proceeding. I, mean, I could read you more of it, but that right there would seem to directly cover this. Um, but we'll see what special counsel uh, Jack Smith does there. I want to go into the clips. Uh, Brett, p p pull up. The, where the post where I show here are the things that Donald Trump uh, did. Um, and, and this is how I do it all the time now. After a speech, um, I, I, if you because I know there are some people who just don't want to see the videos um, and some people who do want to see the videos. Um, but I, I just write everything that happens in a speech. And I specifically here did not include the bloodbath comment. And I, I did that intentionally. And the reason I, I did it is one, because it's been reported everywhere. But I also did it intentionally because I wanted to show that even if I remove that one statement that everybody's focused on and rightfully so, let me show you everything else he does. And I and and that's why it was important for me to do it that way. I have, of course, talked about the bloodbath in the video. I, of course, talk about it in other areas. But let's, let's remove that even from this, which we're going to, of course, get into detail here that we'll talk about. But this is a short summary of what happened at Donald Trump's speech in Dayton, Ohio. He plays the J6 anthem, a song by the rioters he calls hostages. He praises them. He attacks Ron DeSantis and compares him to ISIS. He says he won't fund schools that have vaccine mandates. So welcome back polio to your kids' schools. He says we won World That's War I and World War school. II with, with <laughs> what's like Fort Bragg. He says President Biden beat, quote, Barack Hussein Obama. He struggles to say the word bite when comparing immigrants to snakes. He says immigrants are not people. He says he has been the most unfairly treated president and his crowds are bigger than Reagan. He struggles to say the word Rolling Stones. He says that Fawny Willis is named Fanny like an ass. And then his speech ends, and then I show the video. The, the, the first part I want to show right now, Brett, and let's pull this up, is this is how Trump starts every one of his speeches. It's not unique to this speech. They all begin this way. And this is what we've always talked about here. And that's why whenever I have guests on, I, I always talk about this part. I'm like, he changed our national anthem. He you know. For me too, I was I was the lead lawyer representing Colin Kaepernick when Donald Trump said, "Get this so you know what he said, get the sob off the field," and the NFL listened to him because Colin peacefully protested and took a knee during the playing of the national anthem. Didn't do anything else. Donald Trump and MAGA have changed the words to the J to the national anthem. They made it the J sixth anthem, and they make people pledge allegiance to insurrectionists. So, Brett, just play this clip. This is how he starts every speech, and then we're going to go through all these clips right now. Let's play it, ladies and gentlemen. Please rise for the horribly and unfairly treated January sixth hostages. Well, thank you very much. And you see the spirit from the hostages, and that's what they are as hostages. They've been treated terribly and very unfairly, and you know that, and everybody knows that. And we're going to be working on that soon. The first day we get into office, we're going to save our country, and we're going to work with the people to treat those unbelievable patriots, and they were unbelievable patriots and are. You see the spirit just cheering, they're, making, they're cheering while they're doing that, and they did that in prison, and it's a disgrace in my opinion. Frankly, for me, him saying that part, I know the bloodbath part is getting a lot of the attention. For me, him saying that part, and you and I, for all the Midas Mighty watching this, because people, the media is going to start picking up on that. And by the way, when the media starts writing, you know, Brett, as you were saying, in a shocking turn, I mean, media Trump's you have taken a dark turn recent, recently, meaning from day one of his campaign. I, I, what are we talking where about? Where are all of our viewers going? I don't know, media, <laughs> maybe to the place where we actually report on the news here. At and the I want to provide a little extra context, too, to the J6 stuff. For those saying first, 
is that real? Is that really the voiceover? No, Midas must have added that voice. No, that is 100% real. It sounds fake. It is 100% real. Donald Trump also, for the audio listeners, he doesn't just put his hand over his heart. He puts his hand on his head like a salute, and he salutes the as if they're like Eric. members of the military. He salutes the January 6th insurrectionists. Also, what you can't see in this video, but you can see in some other videos of rallies, is most of the time, at least, when Donald Trump plays this review revised version of the national anthem sung by the most violent January 6th attackers. He is also playing footage of the attack on the Capitol. The entire thing is a celebration of the attack against the United States. That's where the speech began. I want to go through this speech. How's that and then for I want to show you President Biden's response. I want to show you some of the other responses we've seen out there. Um, but I want to take our last quick break of the show. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. If I had just one more hour in my day, I'd spend it with the ones I love the most. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and to make it a priority. And look, Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. I've personally benefited from therapy myself. It's helped me learn positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. Therapy has empowered us to be the best version of ourselves. And it isn't just for those who experience major trauma because what you're going through, whatever it is, truly matters. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give better help a try. Give it a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Midas today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Midas. BetterHelp.com slash Midas. Ever tried to break a bad habit and felt like you're climbing Everest in flip-flops? Yeah, we've been there too, but here's a breath of fresh air. Fume, it's not about giving up, it's about switching up. Fume takes your habit and simply makes it better, healthier, and a whole lot more enjoyable. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. The first time I tried fume, it was way more flavorful than I thought, and it feels very fresh. The look and feel of fume is very sleek, it's well-weighted, perfectly balanced, and extremely fun to fidget with. Plus, fumes just released a magnetic stand for your fume, so there's no more losing it around the house. It's built with fidgeting in mind. You can spin your fume around and around and around it. Start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com slash Midas, T-R-Y-F-U-M dot com slash Midas and getting the journey pack today. Fume is giving listeners of the show 10% off when you use our code Midas to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Go to tryfume.com slash Midas and use our code Midas. Let's go. Excellent ad reads by you, Ben. What's that expression? It's diamonds sharpen diamonds. I mean, you, you guys are just working off of each other for these excellent ad reads. I don't think that's the expression, but you guys understand the point that I'm trying to make here. Anyway, Fume, A plus product, really helps people quit those bad habits and start, you know, a really good habit with their flavored air. So definitely check that out. I know a lot of Midas might actually use the Fume. So please, if you're if you're a user of the Fume, drop in the comments right now that you love it or how it's helped you start a good habit. And then BetterHelp, just a wonderful service. Uh, definitely, definitely, definitely check that out if you are in the market to start some therapy. It's fantastic. Let's go through what went down in Dayton, Ohio, and then let's talk about President Biden's response. This is the line that 
everyone's been talking about. And hat tip to our editorial team at MidasTouch.com. You know, one of the things we do here, and now you see others kind of doing it as well, we've got some of the best researchers who are watching this at all times and pulling those clips. You've got ASIN, you've got uh, a whole team that's led by him, um, uh, and Ron Filipkowski, who are out there pulling these clips. And right here is the clip that was pulled of Donald Trump saying it's going to be a bloodbath. Here, play this clip. And you're not going to be able to sell those guys. If I get elected, now if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole, that's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. And you notice he also says that's going to be the least of it. And he uses those words intentionally. And the context here is that he's giving a speech about revenge and retribution. And it's obviously bothering my dogs right now as well. They're really they're really upset by it. They're really upset by that, as, as anyone should be upset by that clip, Ben. <laughs> I, I agree. Let me show you the next one, too, where Donald Trump talks about Joe Biden beating Barack Obama. Let's play this clip. State against Biden, the largest in the largest margins ever. You know, it was interesting. Joe Biden won against Barack Hussein Obama. Has anyone ever heard of him? Barack Hussein Obama. I mean, okay. If if, if <laughs> President Biden ever made a comment like that, you know, it would be front page everywhere. Let me show you. This is what Donald Trump has to say about funding schools. Here, play this clip. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. Donald Trump then tries to discuss his knowledge of World War One and World War Two. Play this clip. How about the changing? I get out. How about the changing of the names of we won Fort Bragg as an example? You know, the people in the area are going crazy. They changed the name of Fort Bragg. They changed the name of Fort Robert E. Lee. They changed the name of the different forts. We won World War I. We won World War II. We won everything we fought with, really, essentially, from those forts, if we wanted to win. A lot of wars we fight not to win. We fight just to fight because we have stupid people on top. We don't fight wars to win. But we won World War I, World War II out of these forts, and now they changed the name in disgrace. It's a very ter terrible thing, but... And then saying that we have stupid people on top, referring to our military generals, and then just completely making zero sense. I didn't realize that uh, World War I and World War II were fought here domestically out of, out of uh, the forts that we have here. Donald Trump saying he's not going to fund schools that have vaccine mandates. So let's just welcome polio back. Donald Trump having cognitive moments of saying that Joe Biden beat Barack Obama and Donald Trump saying that it would be a bloodbath if he's not elected. And he goes, okay, it's about the auto industry. It's about the auto industry. Well, when you begin by saluting the J6 insurrectionists and call them hostages and you change our national anthem to your own words and you talk about carnage and all of these things, it's pretty clear to us what you're trying to do by dividing us. Here's the statement that was put out by uh, President Biden and the campaign. Um, they put out a statement right away basically condemning uh, it, and then they put out a video as well. Let me show you the kind of rapid response video um, uh, from the Biden uh, campaign. Let's let's play this clip. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath, and it's going to be a bloodbath for the country. Jews will not replace us. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. Are you willing to condemn white supremacists and militia groups? Stand back and stand by. Please rise for the horribly and unfairly treated January 6th hostages. There'll be a lot of pardons and commutations of January 6th defendants. Yes, absolutely. You tell your supporters now, no matter what, no violence. And it's going to be a bloodbath. Brett, I got to give you some credit here because that looks like. It looks very similar to the Midas yeah. views in your style. I love that you've created a, and I'm not, I'm like, 
<laughs> keep doing it. That that was incredible. And what I actually love the sequence of because this is what I've been talking about here. We we've been talking about here. One of the big lines from the first debate was Proud Boys stand back and stand by. Mm -hmm. And if you go back and watch some of our episodes, I said, if you thought that one was bad, now he's saying, Proud Boys, let's redo the anthem together and let me praise you and say that you're great people. And that was the big line from the debate. So remember, we've all been talking about here. What happens when people realize that he's doing the J6 anthem? Like, what's going to go down then? And that's happening right now. And Brett, that looked just like a Midas video. <laughs> Like just like a Midas video. Right? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've I've noticed that, but I I like that they look like Midas videos. You know, I I like that uh, we could be an inspiration uh, for how these things are messaged, and that's good. It's a good thing. Uh, I'm, Finally, I'm let me show you this, Brett. Then I want you to talk about St. Patrick's Day. I want you to hear a little bit about pens. Right. Speaking um, of Midas no. videos, we you know we we released a new uh, digital a Midas digital short today. That I want. Can I play it for the folks here? Uh, I, I, I previewed it earlier for the uh, for our patrons at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. They got and the then first look. They got the first look. And so if you want more first looks like that, you can go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch. That's where we uh, post first looks and other great content. And then in addition to that, uh, later on, we released it on social media. It quickly went viral. It's being shared all over the place. And I definitely want to play it on our show for our, for our podcast uh, viewers. Let's if that's now. cool. Should we do it now? Okay, yeah. so let me... We, we a little. You know. let me, let me, it's true. It's my, this is my show. I can do what I want. So, um, we, so, you know, over the past few days, particularly, um, all these people from Trump world, all these Republicans, whether, oh man, it makes me want to vomit saying this, whether RNC co-chair, Lara Trump, um, you know, well, Lara, uh, whether, go. It's, whether it's at least Stefanik or whether it's Donald Trump himself just today posting on his social media platform, they think that they could use this phrase, are you better off than you were four years ago? One problem about you, one little problem about using that phrase today, four years ago, we were at the beginnings of one of the worst crises ever that our country had to go through. Something so traumatic, something where so many people lost their lives, so many people lost family members, so many people lost their jobs, so many people had to miss very important life events, all because we couldn't buy toilet paper, you couldn't buy food, we had to ration unemployment lines down the block. And so it's so offensive. It's so offensive every day when they try to push this line. Well, just think, are you better off? than you were for you. Yeah, yes. Yes, actually. In every possible way. How about that? In, maybe not for Donald Trump. He's in a bit of trouble right now for about just about everybody else who's still here, um, who Donald Trump did not, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, do everything that he did in 2020. Yes, we are incredible. Uh, we are much better off today. How about that? And so I wanted to make a quick video, a quick Midas short that just contrasted. Okay, you want to ask the question, are we better off than we were four years ago? Well, let's look at four years ago. And so here's our new video, which is we're basically calling right now, we are much better off today. And here is the clip. And people look around and they say, am I better off now than I was four years ago? The answer to that is... President Trump's proposed budget plan could threaten America's ability to fight health threats. This is their new hoax. They have no clue. We have it under control. It's going to be just fine. The U.S. leading the world in deaths. So I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. At some point, uh, that's going to sort of just disappear, I hope. Half of the U.S. population is without a job. We have not seen numbers like that since the Great Depression. Are you better off today than you were four years ago? Store shelves nationwide are dwindling or totally empty. The disinfectant. Is there a way we can do something like that by injection? Testings, frankly, Overrated. A thousand Americans are dying a day. They are dying. That's true. And you ha it is what it is. Are you better off today than you were four years ago? They cannot run on are you better off than you were four years ago. And there you so, have it. There is so good, D. So the newest good. Midas Touch original short that is right now pinned to our uh, profile on X. Um, we Ben will incorporate it in a video on our YouTube channel at some point. Um, it's on our threads. It's on Facebook. It's on Instagram. And so here's what you could do. Anytime you hear one of these bad actors like a Sean Hannity or 
Donald Trump or Lara Trump, anybody try to push this line, just drop that video in the comments. So actually, this is what was going on. And I tried to incorporate there also in the visuals, you know, we had obviously just the horrific handling of COVID by Donald Trump and his insistence that it was a hoax, democratic hoax. And he thought he could basically like name call his way out of COVID, name call his way out of a deadly disease. If you're even clips I didn't include, he called it Kung flu and the China virus and all these despicable things and just de denying reality. But that's what happens when you're a liar and the reality catches up to you and unfortunately catches up to the entire country. But I also tried to include visuals of all the other chaos, uh, you know, at this time four years ago that we were witnessing in the uh, Trump administration when we saw really like militarized police forces shutting down peaceful protesters, uh, punching journalists, uh, throwing people into vans. Like there was so the, the, the Trump Bible stunt when he set off these like smoke or flash grenades um, in Lafayette Square in D.C., four years ago was horrific. And the entire Trump presidency is horrific. And I think in a lot of ways, it was it's so traumatic for so many people that a lot of people have blacked, blacked it out of their memory. And so understanding that people have a lot to do with their lives and, you know, obviously don't want to be perpetually living in that horrific time period where Donald Trump was president and ruined everything. Um, you know, I think these short videos are helpful. And, you know, reminding people of what it was actually like four years ago and not this MAGA fan fiction that Donald Trump and his people try to put out there. And, you know, it's just it's funny how angry reality gets these people too. And even when I saw, you know, your post that outlined literally mm -hmm. just Donald Trump does this. Donald Trump did that. Donald Trump says this. Donald Trump says that the vitriol of the Trump supporters, their comments to you, they get so angry by just your like transcript basically of what Donald Trump says. And it's like, well, dude, he's, he's say he's saying it. Sorry that we're reporting it, but this is what your guy is saying. So I know you don't want other people to know. I know you want this to be stuck inside your little bubble, but guess what? The public's going to know. We're going to make sure of that. Absolutely. I want to show this as well. Do we have the clip of Pence saying that he will not be endorsing Donald Trump? Because, you know, I, I was looking too to see if that would make front page news or even like, I don't know, one of the first few pages in, in major media. And like, you would think that would be a big deal if a former vice president came out against uh, the person who they were. Pretty uh, historical. Who, I can't name a time where it's not, not, not historical. Not, not, Yet, yet it was just kind of like, oh, like, like what, whatever. I mean, and just think about how extreme and radical a, a Trump administration like could actually look like. It would have the worst of the worst people who hate our country. Like you've pushed out Pence, you pushed all those people here. Play this clip of, of, uh, of what Pence had to say. I can't, I can't speculate on it. But what I can tell you is is that in each of these cases, uh, Donald Trump is pursuing and articulating an agenda that is at odds with the conservative agenda that, that we governed on during our four years. And that's why I cannot in good conscience uh, endorse Donald Trump in this campaign. But let me right. say one. He also tried to kill you, so that could be Yeah, something. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say something about Pence. And during these moments where Pence speaks a little bit of truth. I'm not going to be super hard on him as I, and I'll get in 48 hours. I'll be back to being super hard on him. But for this moment, I just want to get this point across. I understand he has to speak to whatever audience he's speaking to here, but I hate this framing as like Donald Trump. Uh, he, you know, he was not in line with conservative principles uh, when he did what he did. These aren't conservative principles. Like these are fundamentally American principles. Okay. Like the guy is completely anti American. And so let's frame it as that instead of, oh, well, you know, he, he didn't define uh, the, the, the teachings of conservatism when he threatened to uh, overthrow the government. No, that's an American value. Okay. Like, like, give me a break. I, I not to piss you off then, but <laughs> I, I did see the New York Times headline. And I don't have it on me, but it was the ultimate both sides thing. And I would have driven you nuts if I sent it to you. So I'll just tell it to you live on the show now to make you angry in front of everybody. But it was something like Pence declines to endorse Trump, but also says he won't vote Biden. <laughs> I mean, just, un just <laughs> legacy media, man. Just that's, <laughs> that the that's I, 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 what do you say to that other than thank you 
to the Midas Mighty and everyone who joins and watches the show every single day and watches the video just to get the real data, the news. And then you can make and form your own opinions for yourself, right? That's what we do in this community. We're a welcoming community valued with pro-democracy ideals. And I think that's why our network continues to grow on our way to 3 million subscribers. So hit that subscribe button right now on YouTube if you haven't already. And Jordan, and you have this moment now where you have Donald Trump swearing off these Republicans, right? His whole thing is, in, in campaigns, normally you want to do a campaign by addition, right? I'm for you also. I'm for you. Yeah, Let's no, unify. That's Let's do this. Yeah. And so the Biden campaign is appropriately calling this out, and they released a statement, the Biden-Harris campaign, on, uh, get this, Donald Trump's former vice president, UN ambassador, chief of staff, national security advisors, defense secretaries, attorney general, and secretary of state. And there's probably a whole bunch more saying that they don't want Donald Trump anywhere near the office again. And they released this statement. The people who know Trump best won't support him. So why should you? Great question. Those who worked with Donald Trump at the most senior levels of his administration believe he's too dangerous too selfish and too extreme to ever lead our country again we agree and then it goes on to uh, discuss the stakes of this campaign and how the biden campaign is a campaign for democrats and independents and all americans right that's how you want to run a campaign and meanwhile what's donald trump saying folks donald trump is saying that the entire republican party not for republicans anymore this is the maga movement it's been rebranded Ben and Jordy, it's rebranded now as MAGA. That's Donald Trump's pitch. If you're not MAGA, get the hell out. Here's just a uh, sampling of Donald Trump's post that Ben had uh, compiled. And you see on the left here, the Donald Trump reposting the Substack. The rebranding of the GOP into MAGA can be accelerated. And then we have a, um, a, a meme that Donald Trump reposted that said, I'm not voting Republican, I'm voting Trump. And I mean, these are the messages that he wants to go into um, as we are, you know, good getting into this election cycle that anyone who is not a Trumper or MAGA, uh, you know, feel free, continue that Trump shrinkage, which apparently is a he, large theme. He's the of snake, Brad. He's a boa constrictor. He just, you know, he, he he makes his circle smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller attacking. Why is he still attacking DeSantis and Nikki Haley? Like, what's the point well, of even doing that other than I mean, isolating more Republicans? Well, many people are saying it's because DeSantis said that he was going to authorize the unsealing of the grand jury records in the Jeffrey Epstein case, but I'll leave you to uh, decide if, when, when, uh, because you know, I mean, literally like DeSantis said that Donald Trump had not attacked DeSantis specifically said he would not. Then all of a sudden the attacks came back. Anyway, let's discuss some other things. Uh, you guys see this picture of Biden and the Kennedy family. I think this speaks absolute volumes. Yes. This was taken on St. Patty's day and shared by really pretty much all the Kennedys, Kerry Kennedy, um, who is RFK, RFK seniors daughter and the younger sister of RFK Jr. posted this photo saying, it's not enough to wish the world were better. You must make the world better. At President Biden, you make the world better. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And I think this is a, a big show of unity with the entire Kennedy uh, family, uh, save for, uh, you know, I guess one people, I think that absence uh, speaks absolute volumes and the fact that the whole family uh, felt that this was an important photo to get out there and to post, you know, it, it shows you the, the, the stakes of the election and that they do have a, a unity and they do have, you know, this incredible support for President Biden and just completely denounce, you know, our RFK and, and everything, RFK Jr. and everything he stands for. And on that note, also, I hope everybody did have a great uh, St. Patty's Day out there and, and got to celebrate and all that. Um, and more good news. You know, we were speaking last week about the Teamsters vice president saying that a Biden endorsement is likely. We are going to continue to monitor uh, what's going on at the Teamsters. But that was, uh, he said some really great things about things about President Biden that we played on the last episode. But today, following that up, we heard from the Steelworkers Union president who went on Fox. And I love when these guys go on Fox and deliver these hard truths to the Fox audience. And the Steelworkers Union president president said that his union is likely to endorse President Biden as well. sure that they would honor them. So let me ask you this. I mean, Joe Biden is against this from happening. Donald Trump is against this from happening. You're weighing a decision on which one to support for president. Where do you lean? Well, we're, we're clearly uh, leaning towards President Biden and we'll endorse him, I'm sure. And it'll be up to our executive board to do that in the very near future. But uh, President Biden is really developed for, at least in my lifetime, an industrial policy in this country with the infrastructure bill, the IRA, and the Chips and Science Act. If you do that along with making sure 
that we're on a level playing field with the rest of the world, that's that's about real progress in America for industrial America. So why not just... The Steelworkers Union uh, president went on to say that, on the contrary, Trump uh, was very anti-union and put a bunch of anti-union people also in his administration and continuously screwed over union workers. He was not mincing words. And then he also went on to say like that Trump couldn't even do the bare minimum for them. He said that they sent Donald Trump a questionnaire, things like, what, what are you going to do for us if you were to get back into office? And Donald Trump did not even send it back with any answers. Donald Trump, he's just in it for himself and it proves time and time again. Other good news, the Biden campaign, Ben said this earlier, but I want to put some numbers to it. $155 million in cash for the 2024 campaign, and they raised $53 million last month. We haven't yet seen Trump's February figures, but by the end of his January, his two major committees had only $36.6 million in cash, and they were spending much more money than they took in. A lot of that money uh, going to legal fees for Donald Trump's many court cases. So that's the state of the race. That's where we're at right now. A great legal updates, Ben. Those uh, very uh, good, a good news day, I would say in, in the legal space, you know, you take the good days with the bad days. We'll bring it to you straight, no matter what is going on, but that's all good. And I feel in the good momentum. You know, I like that people are finally focused on, um, you know, the true darkness that Donald Trump represents. And now it's upon all of us, you know, to continue to spread these messages and make sure that the American people truly understand, you know, the stakes of this election. You have no idea how many people that I speak to on a daily basis when and and. You know, everyone kind of has the same thoughts when they talk to me. They're incredibly worried about Donald Trump and the idea that he could ever get back into office. And a lot of them are very apolitical and don't follow politics all the time. And I, I often say, have you, do you see what he, how he starts his rallies? And they go, no, what are you talking about? I said, well, let me play you a clip. Donald Trump begins his rallies by saluting the January 6 attackers and plays a song that he sings with that. And they're, everyone is always like, what are you talking? Like, what are you talking? What? What? What you know, you're making that up, and then I play it for them. And the, every time I see like the same, just their mouth agape, just absolutely appalled. Still, a lot of people don't know that this is Donald Trump in 2024. So it's upon all of us to continue to spread these messages and and to just continue to wake people up. And I, I think we're seeing people wake up. Ben, I agree, and um, I did promise I would very briefly talk about Murphy v. Missouri, the Supreme Court ah. oral argument that was that, that was held today, and I realized I didn't fully hit upon it, but there was a sweeping injunction issued by a MAGA-controlled Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, which basically prohibited the Biden administration from um, uh, communicating with mostly all social media companies because. You know, the Biden administration would say things, they'd have officials and communications directors and PR people who would basically be like, hey, you know, you, you know, you're promoting disinformation here. You're, you know, these people are spreading Russian propaganda. Here are the lies. Um, you know, and, and we think you should be doing a better job doing it. No actual threat, no actual coercion, just kind of the day-to-day -day stuff that happens when you have communications, right? It's like literally the job of a communications director, but for the snowflake MAGA Fifth Circuit, they, they said that was too much and that was threats and that was coercion and issued an injunction basically prohibiting the administration from having contact. So, and this was the oral argument. And it doesn't seem like the Supreme Court is going to affirm Fifth Circuit. It looks like they're going to overturn even Brett um agreed with uh, justice kagan justice kavanaugh justice kagan like what what are you even talking about here like this is stuff that we did all the time when we worked in, the, in, the, in administrations like like they're not even buying this kind of maga craziness right here and that's the thing folks it's maga craziness and chaos versus normalcy it's wannabe fascism versus democracy this is not a typical election of democrat v republican it, it really isn't this is pro-democracy, Democrats, mainstream Republicans, mainstream conservatives, not the MAGA mutation, independents, progressive, liberals, people not affiliated with political parties. Let's just join together. Let's keep growing this movement together and let's keep getting out the word. And you play the most important role in this because we can't wait for the heroes to arrive on scene. It's so important that you all spread this message and share these videos and share these clips. Exactly what Brett said. The best way to show people is just to show people. And, and we need your help to do that. Like that's the best way you can help. Just show them. 
Here, did you see this? Well, why don't you watch this for a little bit? I just want to show you what's going down. That's the best way you can help. Let people know about this network. Tell people about it in your conversation to subscribe uh, to the Midas Touch YouTube channel. And if you want to help us in other ways too, like financially, we don't have outside investors. So one of the ways you can do that, and no pressure here, go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch right now. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Midas Touch. You know, all of those clips, you know, the ones where Trump says bloodbath, all that stuff. You know, one of the ways we get that is we have a great team of people to do that. And to get that great team, we use our resources to invest in the great team. And you're a major part of that at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. All right, Brett, let's do our after show. Jordy, time for the after show. Maybe um, wash your shirt, Jordy. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. We really appreciate you. Jordy, take it away. Shout out to the Midas Mighty. The Midas Mighty standing strong against the fascists. We sing our song. We will get it right whenever. At Midas Touch, we are unapologetically pro democracy and we demand justice and accountability. That's why we're spreading our message to Convict 45. That's right, gear up right now with your Convict 45 tees and pins at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.